And there's no sound, of course, because this is DVR footage, uh, so I'll just give you commentary over the top because you know that's what I love to do. Uh, this first flight you're seeing is basically stock defaults. Uh, I tried all sorts of things to improve the performance of the copter, and almost everything I did made uh, it worse. I tried adjusting min throttle. I tried turning air mode on. Uh, I tried various things. They've actually done a decent job of setting this up how it needs to be, or I don't know enough about tuning these little brushless copters to do a better job than Iashin has. The only thing I did that categorically improved the performance was I turned the eye gain on pitch up from, I think the default is 50 to about 80. And I found that I found that I was having to manage pitch during turns quite aggressively. And it meant that I couldn't focus on making a smooth turn with yaw and roll because I was constantly having to fight the pitch axis. Raising the eye gain on pitch to about 80, maybe 85, it caused the copter to turn much better and do a much better job. It's not flying bad here though, uh, frankly. The camera is is slightly better than you're seeing here. It was actually getting towards the end of the day and it was starting to get dark. So a lot of this glare that you're seeing, and especially in the next clip that I'm gonna show you, it starts to get really grainy because the it's just getting darker towards the evening. The camera is not spectacular by any means, but it is, it's marginally better than what you're seeing right here. Here I've turned the eye gain up and maybe you, I could feel it, maybe you can see it. The copter handles a little better in the turns. They're just a little smoother and they certainly felt way better. See that glare there? That glare is because this room is getting actually fairly dark and the camera is doing a good job of making it look way brighter than it really is, but it's, it's suffering a bit for it. As far as tuning goes, uh, when I was tuning, oh, 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 hey, oh, we'll just pick that up. We'll get going again. <laughs> as far as tuning goes, when I was tuning at my friend's house, we also ended up raising the P gain on yaw somewhat, but I did. I felt like this copter was handling pretty good with just that change to eye gain, uh, and that's about it. I didn't like the fact that it came with, uh, with air mode off and motor stop on. Uh, I really like to be able to drop the throttle to lose altitude quickly and with motor stop on, of course, as soon as you go below min check, then he, the, the copter stops. And actually, I had at least one crash that was a result of me trying to drop altitude. So I chopped the throttle and I went below min check and the copter just tumbled. And that was the end of one of the three QX90s that Banggood sent me. Yep, in this case, that crash knocked the inductor off the video transmitter, and the video transmitter was toast. The rest of the copter was fine, but the video transmitter was toast. And this is how I destroyed the second of the three QX90s that Banggood sent me. Uh, I got into a little bit of trouble here. I chopped the throttle, the copter tumbled onto this concrete floor, and that broken arm. So what's the final verdict on this copter? I think that this copter is far from perfect, but I think it offers a lot of fun for the price if you understand its limitations. Uh, so for a price of about 60, 65 bucks, you get basically a bind and fly, more or less. Uh, Microcopter brushed, you can fly it through your house, you can do little races with it, you do a little bit of tuning on it and it flies surprisingly well uh, for such a small copter with such tiny motors. Um, on the other hand, it is definitely uh, fragile. It is not like a 250 copter. You just fly it, smash it into the ground at, you know, 40 miles an hour. It tumbles, it rolls, you, you scratch the dust off it, you put it back in the air. And I had that experience with this copter when we were flying indoors at my friend's house with carpet and couches. But flying in this, this is the top of my hotel when I was in New York City, uh, in this area with the concrete floors and I destroyed two copters over the course of uh, t 10 batteries. So uh, you got to know its limitations. I would say if you order this copter, definitely get the prop guards. Now, one of the biggest ways that the copter crashes is that you, you, you're flying underneath a chair or something and you bang a prop. And of course, that's not a problem with the ducted fan designs like the Inductrix. Adding a prop guard to this will greatly increase its survivability because it will decrease the number of times you hit the ground because you smacked a prop on something. It'll just bounce off the wall and keep going. I did some looking and it looks like an Inductrix goes for about $130, which is roughly twice the price of one of these. 
And, and that, it gets a little interesting there. Uh, so if to fly an inductrix, of course, they come ready for spectrum. So the, if you have a Tyrannus, which many, many people have a Tyrannus, right? If you have a Tyrannus, the price of an inductrix is going to be a little higher because you're going to either need to swap out the flight controller for something like, I think the B-Brain from Furious has a built-in Tyrannus receiver. I could be wrong about that. Somebody makes a, a flight controller with a built-in uh, FreeSky receiver. Or you could get a, like a module for your Tyrannus, and that's going to add another 30 bucks or so. For if you, so if you have a Tyrannus, the price to get into something like a Tiny Whoop is going to be around 150 bucks. On the other hand, I just told you that I destroyed two of these in less than 10 packs of flying. So if you weren't going to be careful with your QX90, you could easily get into the price range where you could have bought an Inductrix. And I, I have flown the Inductrix a little bit when I was with the guys from Microsoft. It flies differently than the QX90 because it's a ducted fan design. But there's no doubt that people have souped the, the Inductrix or, or the Tiny Whoop, depending on how you call it, uh, up to much higher levels of performance than you're going to see out of a QX90. So if, if you have... Uh, in the range of $150 to spend, then certainly the Inductrix is a better buy, or the Tiny Whoop is a better buy than buying three QX90s. But on the other hand, if you're just looking for something cheap to bash around and you're willing to treat it with a little bit of, of acknowledgement of its limitations, the QX90 is a super, super fun copter to fly.